Welcome back everybody, and I think you guessed it by now that this was coming a mile away. Finally it's time to test the Quad SLI setup. Don't forget about the first part where we saw how good one GTX 295 still is. But today we are playing around with the maximum number of GPUs accepted by Nvidia in a gaming environment. I had a lot of fun and with some twists along the way which I'll show you later on in the video. But first things first, we take our testing PC, which of course remains unchanged, and strap on the second GTX 295. It's showtime guys, we pull out our gaming list and let's see the numbers. First up we have Black Flag. At Full HD we clearly see that the game only uses 3 GPUs from the available 4. There is some stuttering present, but alas the game is quite fluid. Then there is an identical story with minor improvements in FPS in 720p. Battlefield 4 is next. No need to point out that at Full HD we witnessed heavy frame drops which are present almost all the time. Things change in 720p where we almost reach 100 FPS and everything is pretty much fluid. This time Bioshock Infinite worked. This is weird since he didn't want to start with only one video card as we saw in the previous video. Anyway, let's proceed. Again, 3 GPUs are doing all the heavy lifting and as you can see the numbers are very consistent. Thus we can say the game is pretty much optimized. Then in 720p we breach again the 100 frames per second mark. Crisis Warhead only uses as an average of 60% of the total processing power available from the 3 GPUs. Too bad because things should have been much better. The smaller resolution is no exception as well. The same GPU usage but with almost double the frame rates. Anyway, the Crisis games will always remain a taboo in the gaming world. Moving on. Counter Strike Global Offensive apparently will work very well on pretty much anything. So there is no surprise there. Still, 3 GPUs is the maximum number once more in both resolutions. GTA 5 is like our nemesis in every multi-GPU scenario we have tested so far. Again, only one GPU is fully active, but still 60 frames per second is not too shabby. Finally, Max Payne so far is the only game that uses all 3 GPUs to the max. But this comes with a cost. Just look at those temperatures guys. We are reaching almost 95 degrees Celsius on some of the chips. Then the Quad SLI is an overkill for 720p, thus the usage drops to 70% overall and there is no more FPS increase over the Full HD. Next up is Metro Last Light which follows Max Payne's footsteps and provides excellent optimization and great results across the board. Ok, Tomb Raider closes our usual testing session and does so in full glory. The built-in benchmarks squeezed out every ounce of performance left in these cards and took the stock cooling to the limit. I mean these video cards have a thermal threshold of 105 degrees celsius and I hit 104 just before the benchmark ended. I literally had my hand on the power cord and was ready to pull it before it crashed. I was like so yeah, like I said, I had a lot of fun with this. Then here is the total power draw from the wall, the specs for the computer are in the description. And if you miss the sound of a jet engine, here is a reminder. Then after I finished my tests, I started to appreciate silence to a whole new level. So yeah, that's it for today guys. As a conclusion, most of the games didn't use more than 3 GPUs simultaneously and barely went over 60-17% to of the total processing power available. Max Payne, Metro Last Light and Tomb Raider were the most optimized games out there and thus produced the best results. We are now software limited and ownership of more than a dual GPU SLI setup for gaming is almost useless. Not to mention that the heat output will rival most household heating systems. Another one checked. Thank you for watching guys. Please subscribe and catch you on the other side. Alex out.